What's the relation between XA and YA? If I have an affine variety, we get an ideal that's finitely generated by polynomials. All those polynomials are homogeneous. We get past the projective space and we get a projective variety. In the other direction, if I have a projective variety, we can form the cone over that variety. So here, if I take any point in the projective variety that corresponds to a line in the affine space, we take the union of all those lines, we get another affine variety, and that's what we call the cone over the projective variety V. And we denote it by V hat. Now what about XA, YA, and the cone over XA? That's gonna be a proposition. Okay, before we do that, we need to remind ourselves of machinery for affine toric varieties. So you need, may need to go back and review this. Now for Y sub A, we start with a okay, finite subset of characters. That gives a short exact sequence. Okay, L is gonna be the lattice of relations. And from L, we can form a toric ideal, which is gonna be the ideal that vanishes on Y sub A, precisely. Proposition says, okay, so we've set up y sub a, x sub a. We've noted that the torque ideal is the same as the ideal for y sub a. Following our equivalent. Okay, one, a, y sub a is equal to the cone over x sub a. B, the ideal for x sub a is the ideal for y sub a. C, the ideal for y sub a is homogeneous, which means it's generated by homogeneous elements. And D, technical condition, there exists a one parameter subgroup U, a positive integer K, such that if we take the pairing of M sub I with U, we get K for any I. Okay, and we'll try to give a better feel for this once we get past the proofs. Now, straightforward to see that A and B are equivalent and that B implies C, so we want to show that C implies D, D implies A. This is getting a little bit tactical, so you may want to fast forward to get a feel for what D does and come back later for the proofs. Now, for C implies D, so what do we want to do here? I want to show if I sub L, the torque ideal is homogeneous, then we're going to be able to produce this one parameter subgroup U. We have two parts here. For the first part, I want to show that if I take 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 and dot with any relation, Okay, in the lattice of relations, we get zero. Then the second part's gonna be producing U. Now, to show this, we first gotta do a proof by contradiction. So I wanna show, okay, so I have a torque ideal, it's homogeneous. If it's a torque ideal, then it's generated by binomial differences. So let's take an X alpha minus an X beta. We wanna show that the degrees of the X alpha and the X beta have to be the same. So proof by contradiction. So I assume that they're different. There's a result about homogeneous ideals that says, if you take any element in the homogeneous ideal, decompose according to degree, okay, components by degree, that each component also has to be in the homogeneous ideal. So if these degrees are different, then X alpha and X beta have to be in the torque ideal, and that gives a contradiction. Because we know the torque ideal is the ideal for Y sub A, but if we put 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, which is in Y sub A, into X alpha or X beta, okay, we get 1, which is not equal to 0. So contradiction. Now that means the degrees are the same. And here you need to go back and remind yourself of the machinery for affine torque varieties. So what this is going to say is, okay, remember, how do you get alpha and beta? Well, we're going to have a relation. And we can split that relation into two parts the positive entries and the negative entries. If the de degrees are the same, that says the weight of the positive entries is the same as the weight of the negative entries. So if I sum all of them up, I get zero, which is the same as dotting with the vector one, 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 one. So that's how we get this first part. For the second part, okay, kind of abstract nonsense, what we'll do, okay, we take our short exact sequence. These are all lattices, so I'm gonna tensor over Q that's gonna give us vector spaces, and then we're gonna dualize, which is gonna reverse the direction of everything. So that's gonna give us, okay, we have N sub Q going into Q to the S, going into HOM of LQ into Q, so linear functionals. Now, because this is exact, okay, this is also a short exact sequence, that means, okay, by our condition here, 
Okay, one, 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 and here is in the kernel going over to there because it goes to zero as a linear functional, which means there's some u tilde which maps onto one, 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 one. Okay, and then when we decode this, this just says that for each m sub i dotted with the u tilde, we get a one. That's what the ones all mean. And so I can multiply u tilde by some integer to clear out all the fractions, all the denominators. And so that's going to give us the condition that we're looking for for u. Let's show that d implies a. We assume we have our one parameter subgroup u with the technical condition. We want to show that y sub a is equal to the cone over x sub a. In general, y sub a is contained in the cone for x sub a, and the cone for x sub a is irreducible because x sub a is. Thus, it suffices to show that the cone over x sub a intersects c star of the s is contained in y sub a. Then we can take the Zariski closure of both sides to get the containment that we want. Now, if we pick p in the cone over x sub a intersect c star of the s, okay, since x sub a intersect the torus, for projective s minus one space is just a torus for x sub a. Okay, we have that p can be written as okay, mu, where mu is a complex number, not zero, times phi sub a applied to t, where t is in t sub a. Now, we want to match this to a point on y sub a, and our first guess isn't going to be quite exactly there. So we're going to make a first guess, and then we're going to adjust it to make it equal. Now, we're going to define a q in y sub a as follows. So by d, we have our one parameter subgroup u. It will denote it by lambda upper u. That'll give us elements in t sub a. So q is going to be equal to, we're going to take phi sub a, because it's going to have characters in each entry, applied to the product of phi upper u on a tau times the t we have here. Okay? And we're going to have to solve for tau. Now, because chi is a character, okay, we can apply it to each entry. And we know when we compose a character with one parameter subgroup, we bring in the pairing. And by condition D, that pairing is always going to give us k in this case. So we're always going to have coefficient tau to the k, which we can pull out in front. So this is tau upper k times phi sub a on t. Now, because k is positive, I can always solve okay, the equation mu equal tau to k. Okay, we have a problem if k was equal to 0. And that gives us our p equal to q once we've solved. And so that's d implies a, and we have the proposition. Now, how do we make sense of condition d? What does this really mean? For the geometry, okay, slightly helpful. What this says is that our generating set of characters a is contained in a hyperplane in the vector space m sub q, okay, but doesn't go through the origin. A little bit better is using linear algebra. So if I have character lattice equal to z upper n, we could think of our m1 through ms as being columns of a matrix A. And then we note, okay, well, what happens with linear algebra? If we take A times a vector on the right, we get a linear combination of the columns. If I take u times a, u a vector on the left, we get a linear combination of the rows. So condition D is the same as trying to solve UA equal to a tuple full of Ks. Okay, and so this is the same as saying that okay, the tuple 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 is in the row space of A over the rational numbers. Let's look at some examples. So if we take A equal to, okay, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, minus 1, if I add up the rows, we get 1, 1, 1, 1, and so this satisfies condition D. That means y sub a is equal to the cone over x sub a. We also have that the ideal, the torque ideal, is homogeneous. Okay? And we see that the ideal is just generated by a single element, x, y minus z, w. That's homogeneous of degree 2, as promised. For our next example... Let's consider the rational normal cone and the rational normal curve. So A is equal to, okay, we have D0, D minus 1, 1, all the way up through 0, D. If we add row 1 and row 2, we get the tuple full of Ds. So the proposition holds. 
and the terminology is consistent. So the rational normal cone is the cone over the rational normal curve of the same degree. We also have that their ideals are the same. And in fact, they're given by just taking the minors of this two by D matrix. We've seen that before. So the generators are homogeneous of degree two. Now, another approach to this that requires correction, let's instead take for our characters, okay, generated by B equals zero, one, two, up through D. So phi sub B is gonna carry C star to C D plus one. The T goes to one, T, T squared up through T to the D. If I pass the projective space, we still get the rational normal curve of degree D, but Y sub A is not gonna be the rational normal cone. Okay, so in fact we see, if I consider coordinates of phi sub B, okay, we have one generator is X1 squared minus X2, which is not homogeneous. So Y sub A is not the cone over the rational normal curve. Now, to fix this, okay, so that means I want to keep x sub a as it is, but I want y sub a to become the cone. What we could do is add a row of ones to our a matrix. So I now consider a prime. What does this do to the characters? Well, just adding in a one means we're throwing in a new variable and in our map, we're just gonna let it have exponent one in each coordinate. Now this doesn't change our rational normal curve at all, but it will change y sub a. So we note, for instance, if we take our generator from before, okay, we had x1 squared minus x2, okay, that's not gonna hold anymore. Instead, I have to use x1 squared minus x0, x2, which is now homogeneous of degree two. So we've turned y sub a into a cone. Final example, let's consider a equal two. Okay, so we have a matrix two, three. We've seen before, this is gonna be the elliptic curve Okay, given by x cubed minus y squared. So this is not gonna be generated by a homogeneous polynomial and the proposition fails. Now, we'll note, okay, I can correct by putting in a row of ones, so I now have an a prime. Our phi sub a prime, can okay, we add an extra variable, put that variable in each coordinate, and now we see the x and y are independent. So before there was a relation, now there's no relation because of the mu. That means the coordinate ring for y sub a prime is just polynomials and two variables, which means that y sub a prime is a C2. Okay, we could also see x sub a prime is just gonna be projective lines, so P1. Okay, one way to see that is to note, we could divide through in here by S squared mu, which is gonna give us a one in the first coordinate, free variable in the second, and we've already seen that corresponds to the projective line. Finally, we just note the fact that, okay, what do we do? If I'm gonna take the cone over the projective line, we're just gonna take all lines through the origin in C2, take their union, which gives us all of C2. And that holds by what we have here. Much further than that.